Hello everyone. It's been a while since I've done an installment of the one and only Ivan, so I wanted to continue. We left off on page 105, so I'm going to start on page 106, okay? A hit. Stella's foot hurts too much for her to do any hard tricks for the two-hour show. Instead, Mac pulls her, limping, into the ring, where she tracks a circle in the sawdust. Ruby clings to her like a shadow. Ruby's eyes go wide when Snickers jumps on Stella's back, then leaps onto her head. At the four o'clock show, Stella can only get as far as the entrance to the ring. Ruby refuses to leave her side. At the seven o'clock show, Stella stays in her domain. When Matt comes for Ruby, Stella whispers something in her ear. Ruby looks at her pleadingly, but after a moment, she follows Mac to the ring. Ruby stands alone. The bright lights make her blink. She flaps her ears. She makes her tiny trumpet sound. The humans stop eating their popcorn. They coo, they clap. Ruby's a hit. I don't know whether to be happy or sad. And here's a picture of Ruby. Can you see that? Worry. When Julia arrives after the show, she brings three thick books, one pencil, and something she calls magic markers. Hi, here, Ivan, she says. She slides two magic markers and a piece of paper into my, doma into my domain. I like the sundown colors, red and purple. But I don't feel like coloring. I'm worried about Stella. All evening, she's been quiet, and she hasn't eaten a bit of her dinner. Julia follows my gaze. Where is Stella anyway, she asks, and then goes to Stella's gate. Ruby extends her trunk and Julia pats it. Hi, baby, she says. Is Stella all right? Stella's lying in a pile of dirty hay. Her breath is ragged. Dad, Julia calls. Could you come here a minute? George sets aside his mop. Do you think she's okay, Dad? Julia asks. Look at the way she's breathing. Can we call Mac? I don't think there's, I think there's something really wrong. He must know about her. George rubs his chin. He always knows, but a vet costs many jewels. Please, Julia's eyes are wet. Call him, Dad. George gazes at Stella. He puts his hands on his hips and sighs. He calls Mac. I can't hear all of the words, but I can hear George's lips tighten into a grim line like this. George, gorilla expressions and human expressions are a lot alike. Max says the vet's coming in the morning if Stella's not any better, he tells Julia. He says he's not going to let her die on him, not after all the money he's put into her. George strokes Julia's hair. She'll be all right. She's a tough old girl. Julia sits by Stella's domain until it's time to go home. She doesn't do her homework. She doesn't even draw. The promise. My domain gleams with moonlight when I wake to the sound of Stella's calls. Ivan, Stella says in a hoarse whisper. Ivan, I'm here, Stella. I sit up abruptly and Bob topples off my stomach. I run to a window. I can see Ruby next to Stella, sleeping soundly. Ivan, I, I want you to promise me something, Stella says. Anything, I say. I've never asked for a promise before because promises are forever. And forever is an unusually long time, especially when you're in a cage. Domain, I correct. Domain, she agrees. I straighten my, to my full height. I promise, Stella, I say, in a voice like my father's. But you haven't even heard what I'm asking yet, she says, and she closes her eyes for a moment. Her great chest shudders. I promise anyway. Stella doesn't say anything for a long time. Never mind, she finally says. I don't know what I was thinking. The pain is making me addled. Ruby stirs. Her trunk moves as if she's reaching for something that isn't there. 
When I say the words, they surprise me. You want me to take care of Ruby. Stella nods, a small gesture that makes her wince. If she could have a life that's different from mine, she needs a safe place, Ivan, not, not here, I say. It would be easier to promise to stop eating, to stop breathing, to stop being a gorilla. I promise, Stella, I say, I promise it on my word as a silverback. Knowing. Before Mac, before Bob, even before Ruby, I know that Stella is gone. I know it the way you know that summer is over and winter is on its way. I just know. Stella once teased me that elephants are superior because they feel more joy and more grief than apes. Your gorilla hearts are made of ice, Ivan, she said, her eyes glittering. Ours are made of fire. Right now I would give all the yogurt raisins in the world for a heart made of ice. Five men. Bob heard from a rat a reliable sort, that they tossed Stella's body into the garbage into a garbage truck. It took five men in a forklift. Comfort. All day I try to comfort Ruby, but what can I say? That Stella had a good and happy life? That she lived as she was meant to live? That she died with those who loved her most nearby? Well, at least the last is true. Crying. Julia cries all evening while her father sweeps and mops and dusts and cleans the toilets. When George sees Mac, he runs to him. I can only hear a few of his words. Vet. Should have. Wrong. Mac shrugs. His shoulders droop. He leaves without a word. When George wipes his fingerprints off my glass, his cheeks are wet. He doesn't meet my eyes. The one and only Ivan. When all the humans have left, I send Bob to check on Ruby. How is she, I ask, when he returns. She was shivering, Bob says. I tried to cover her with hay and I told her not to worry because you were going to save her. I glare at him. You told her that? You promised Stella, Bob lowers his head. I wanted to make the kid feel better. I shouldn't have made that promise, Bob. I just wanted, I pointed to Stella's domain and for a moment it seems like I've forgotten how to breathe. I wanted to make Stella happy, I guess, but I can't save Ruby. I can't even save myself. I flop onto my back. The cement is always cold, but tonight it hurts. Bob leaps onto my belly. You are the one and only Ivan, he says, mighty silverback. He licks my chin. He's not even checking for leftovers. Say it, Bob commands. I look away. Say it, Ivan. I don't answer, so Bob licks my nose until I can't stand it any longer. I am the one and only Ivan, I mutter. And don't you ever forget it, he says. When I gaze at the food court skylight, the moon Stella loved is shrouded in clouds. Once upon a time. All night, Ruby moans and sniffles. I pace my domain. I don't want to fall asleep in case she needs something. Ivan, Bob says gently, get some sleep, please, for your sake and for mine. Bob can't sleep until he's on, unless he's on my stomach. I hear a stirring. Ivan, Ruby calls. I rush to my window. Ruby, are you all right? I miss Aunt Stella, Ruby sobs. And I miss my mom and my sisters and my aunts and my cousins, too. I know, I say, because it's all I can think of. Ruby sniffles. I can't sleep. Do you know any stories the way Aunt Stella did? 
Not really, I admit. Stories were Stella's specialty. Tell me a story about when you were little, Ruby pleads. She puts her trunk between the bars. Please, Ivan. I scratch the back of my, hat, my head. I don't remember things, Ruby, I admit. It's true, Bob says, trying to be helpful. Ivan has a terrible memory. He's the opposite of an elephant. Ruby lets out a long, shivery breath. Oh, well, that's okay. Night, Ivan and Bob. I listen to Ruby's soft sobs for long, horrible minutes. Then I hear myself saying, Once upon a time, there was a gorilla named Ivan. And slowly and deliberately, I try to remember. Uh, and we are going to continue on the next page in the next video. All right.